Welcome to our lecture online. Again, we're going to find the, we're going to use the same solution that we found in the previous video, where we had a partial differential equation, and the solution had the general form that u was equal to some function of p, which is some function of x squared y. But now the requirement is that u will be equal to 4 when p has the value of x equals 1 and y equals 1, or the function so p being the function of x, y, where x equals 1 and y equals 1. So how do we find the proper value for u, the proper equation for u? Well, let's see here. The easy thing would be to have something times this plus 4, and that that something would actually be equal to 0. So one option would be to say that u, we have an x and y, would be equal to 0 times x squared y, plus 4. Now, technically, that is not a valid solution because, after all, we wanted to have an x squared y, and of course, there would not be an x squared y here. 0 plus 4, I don't know if that actually is, uh, is a valid solution, but it would at least give you the right answer. What if we do the following? What if we go u uh, of x and y is equal to 1 times x squared y plus 4? Nope, not plus 4 this time, we're going to go plus 3 because if we plug in a 1 for x and a 1 for y, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, we get 1 plus 3 and that would indeed, indeed equal 4 and that's what we're looking for. It always needs to be equal to 4. So now we can see a pattern and if you can say u of x comma y is equal to 2 times x squared y, plus 2, that also would give us the right answer, or we can say that u x y is equal to 3 times x squared y plus 1, and I think you can see the pattern. We can also use that u of x y is equal to 4 times x squared y, and then you don't need to add a constant and you can then come up with almost an infinite number of combinations that so always give you u being equal to 4 depending upon what number you put in front of here and what constant you add. So you could probably come up with 10 or 20 very quickly, especially when you start using fractions as well. So at least that gives you some more insight on how you can get a general form of the equation and then if you want to look for a specific a specific solution, then you plug in what is given, and then you just have to kind of think about it a little bit, and then you can come up with the obvious answers. And that's typically how it's done when we're dealing with partial differential equations.